Uh, during one of the summers when I came home, uh, visiting with my great-grandmother, uh, who had lost her legs to diabetes and was very close to death actually at the time, and, and uh, she pulled me aside at a family gathering and, and told me that, uh, uh, that she had been praying for me. And uh, of course I was at Concordia studying, and so I was used to a lot of my relatives saying that. Uh, but she, she said, no, she said, from the very day you've been born, I've prayed for you regularly that you would become a pastor. And uh, I had never heard that before. And uh, that was kind of like one of the, one of the confirmations that, uh, that God was working in my life in an amazing way that just kind of put it all together. Here's a question for you to consider. Is God calling me to be a pastor? Is he calling me to serve as a full-time Lutheran teacher or a director of Christian education? Has God given me the gifts to be a deaconess? Is he calling me to be a director of parish music? Now those are very important questions. We know that God calls each of us in our baptism to be his child. We know that he gives each and every one of his children spiritual gifts so that we can live out our calling as witnesses of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. But God also calls some into direct, full-time service. Hear what St. Paul writes in Ephesians 4, beginning at verse 11. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You might well ask, how do people today know that God has called them into ministry? At a recent educator conference and a pastoral conference, we asked teachers and pastors and DCEs and others how they were led to serve in their various positions. While there are some dramatic stories, most of the people who serve God in full-time ministry didn't see a miraculous fire or hear a voice from heaven. How can a person know that God is calling him or her into direct, full-time service as what we call a church worker? Both of my parents taught in Lutheran schools when I grew up, as I growing up, so I was always growing up around them. The biggest factor in my decision to begin uh, working in the ministry was the lack of leadership in the Hispanic Outreach Ministry. While I was growing up, my favorite aunt was my Aunt Priscilla, and she was a Lutheran school teacher. When I was young, I remember her going through the Concordia system, and I wanted to be just like her. I didn't start out thinking I was going to go into full-time church work, but God just put people and events in my life that made it hard for me to deny that that's what He wanted me to do. It was definitely a, a God-led decision. And as I was in that four-year process with the seminary, I realized that's where it was at. I can, I can put other people in contact with the Lord. That's really what we all need primarily. And then from there, everything else flows. As you listen to the stories of those who serve in full-time ministry, you will hear again and again how important it is to have people who are encouragers, who keep you in prayer, who serve as a model for you in ministry. I was inspired to enter full-time church work because I had many teachers growing up that had were very dedicated to my education as a child and they just really inspired. Didn't really know what I wanted to do, thought maybe veterinary medicine and uh, talked with my pastor and my youth leader and uh, my youth leader suggested that I go into a youth ministry since that's what I love to do so much. And I visited Concordia University in St. Paul, Minnesota and fell in love with it and um, decided I wanted to be a DC. When I was in eighth grade, I transferred schools to a Lutheran school and I was just amazed at the way that my new Lutheran teachers were able to care about me as a whole student, not just academically, but they also cared about me emotionally, spiritually, socially, and that meant a lot to me. They were the first people that, outside of my own family that I could really look to as Christian mentors, and that made a huge impact on my life, and I decided that year that I wanted to be one of them when I was older. The people who influenced me to go into the ministry include um, my father, who was a Lutheran school teacher for uh, 37 years, um, my youth group uh, that I was involved in, and the other youth in my group uh, in my congregation. 
Jesus once told his disciples. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Today, we too live in the midst of a mission field that desperately needs to hear the love of Christ. The situation that we face is the same one that Paul wrote about to the Roman Christians in Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 13. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how, then, can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Many of the pastors, teachers, and DCE we talked with shared what excites them most about ministry. Listen to their joy in sharing the gospel with young and old. I worked in public schools for a while helping out and I love the teaching aspect but something was missing and when I helped out in Lutheran schools that whole talking about God and being able to share the message with the kids through all the subjects just felt better. Um, I've met some wonderful little people in my life at, at teaching young grades always and they I can really see their love for Christ already even you know five or six years of age. The joys of serving a ministry begins in the home, it begins with your relationship with Christ and starting to work at, at uh, learning more about what He has done and following the heart that of a servant. Teaching the faith is one of the most rewarding things that you can possibly do. Not only do you get all these children every day who you get to nurture and love, but sharing Jesus' love with them is, is rewarding beyond measure. Um, I love watching children learn and helping them succeed. And to me, that's um, very rewarding. And teaching in a Lutheran school um, just gives me the opportunity to share my faith with them. And that's very important to me. What is the most exciting in the ministry is when I see uh, people's lives transform, just uh, sometimes um, by the little things that we're able to do, uh, the prayers that we have. To say that uh, one of the things in my ministry that I, that I get most excited about is, uh, is Bible study in general. I really, really uh, love interacting with people about learning more about God's Word. If you believe God may be calling you into full-time ministry, pray for guidance. Talk to your principal or your teacher. Talk with your pastor, your family, your spouse. Ask them if they see qualities in you that cause them to think you might be called by God. Ask others if they see the same qualities. This is vitally important. If you really feel God might have gifted someone to be a church worker, tell them. Remember, you're only providing them with a piece of information. The fact that you see these qualities and think God might be calling. For more information about full-time service in the church, contact the Concordia House of Studies, a ministry of the Florida Georgia District. Go online at www.flga-lcms.com. Dot org and click on the Concordia House of Studies link or call the Florida Georgia District Office. May God grant you the joy experienced by the prophet Isaiah from Isaiah 6 verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me.